Well, when you think how long we've been doing A's, it doesn't matter. We've been on a different stations, different platforms, whether we're talking about audio, video, TV, radio, a guy that's been joining me for so many years and we have so much respect. He's one of, if not the top columnists in all of Major League Baseball. From the USA Today, the great Bob Nightingale joins us. Bob, how are you? Hope all things are well. Yeah, doing great. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you. So I had to go back into my email because an article that you did a while back that we talked about on this show, and I kept it, MLB continues to be stricken with nightmare epidemic elbow injuries. And it's just amazing to me, Bob, that I'm waking up and everybody's sitting here talking about how sad it is about Shohei Otani and how hor- and you're like, this is happening everywhere. It's happening at every level. It's just not Shohei Otani. It's X amount of pitchers at the big league level, the minor league level, the college level. We have a major problem in our game, and it's like nobody wants to address it. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, you go back, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 30 years ago, guys are much healthier. And, you know, people are being more careful with pitch counts and everything else. Uh, You know, I think maybe, you know, it's time to reassess. You know, too many guys are just trying to throw the ball as hard as they can. They work out with these weighted balls and they're they're hurting themselves. Uh, You know, these guys have just, you know, short, short careers now. Uh, You know, Tampa Bay now, I think they've had eight or nine guys have Tommy John surgery since 2021 uh, you know it's supposed to be the art of pitching not throwing as hard as you can and then blow out you know it's like they're you know redlining in a car and that engine's gonna blow yeah it makes you realize there's been one guy we've seen one guy who's been able to go full throttle for 20 plus years and not have the arm injury it's nolan ryan i mean other than that even randy johnson at the end we were talking about this at the beginning of the show it wasn't the elbow, obviously, or the shoulder. It was, but the back couldn't take it anymore. To push the human body full throttle like we want them to do for twenty plus years. I mean, you look around. I mean, it's the ultimate outlier. Nolan Ryan's been the only guy that's ever been able to do it. Yeah, but even you know, just amazing. I mean, we look at guys like uh, you know uh, uh, Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin. Those guys fish a long time. I don't think Maddox ever had a major injury. So, and, you know, those guys weren't bothered by pitch counts and things like that. I know Atlanta used to have guys pitching the side twice a week instead of just once. Yeah. So, you know, I think just the way these, uh, these guys are being brought up now. You know, I think John Smoltz joked the, uh, the most unbreakable record in all of baseball is Greg Maddox. He threw 27 complete games in the minor leagues in his career. It's like a lot of these kids go five innings and looking around, wait to be, you know, called out of games. You know, no one's even uh, – you know, stretch those arms out. <laughs> that actually is pretty funny. I didn't realize that. He had 27 <laughs> complete games in the minor leagues. <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah. Because, yeah, Small says, hey, what's the most unbreakable record? I came up with the traditional ones. And, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually is funny. And I just, you know, we're so addicted to velocity. We want that 100 miles an hour. We want spin rates. We're trying to throw sliders as hard as we can. Now we got the sweepers and we got – everything is just maxed out. Obviously the elbow ligament can't take it. Do you foresee with all the people that you talk to that there may be kind of a reset going, man, maybe we shouldn't try and have everybody throw everything as hard as they can, or is it going to be same old, same old going forward? Well, they should wake up for it. You know, you don't go to those, uh, you know, the, the uh, different places they go, all the fitness centers and, and, build your arm strength so you can throw as hard as you can. Those guys all blow out. They really do. And they, uh, you know, you look at guys like a, like a Zach Gallon of Arizona, he throws, you know, 93, 94, 95. And, you know, he may win the Cy Young, you know, as long as you know how to pitch. Uh, it's like a, you know, a couple of pitching coaches that said, you know, to me this year, you know, who cares how fast you throw a ball for if you've got to throw strikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, coach, it was 101, and oh, my God, yeah, it was ball four. It's not doing me uh, any good. And the standpoint of the Angels, they went all in. It didn't work. But I think about where we are now to where probably Shohei Otani will not pitch next season. I We actually had an off-camera off, off camera 
conversation with our general manager, David Forrest, because I wanted to run it by him going, you know, when you looked at this contract, the amount of money that he was going to get paid, the amount of money he was going to make for you, when we talk about the money he makes for you domestically, the money that Shohei Otani makes for you potentially internationally, you would have to bring in people to figure out what is truly the value of this guy. It's not the, the economics is so much bigger than a baseball front office. You got to bring salespeople, people that understand international business. And he agreed to all that. It, it would be the most unique contract of all time. But now knowing that we know, does this injury actually maybe give the Angels a better chance to sign him since he's not going to go to the free agent market at, as this greatest pitcher and hitter combination we've ever seen, at least for the first year or two years of the deal? No, I, I agree with you, because uh, I really do. I, I think they had a much better chance of keeping the people about originally, but, you know, even more so now in the sense he knows the doctors, he knows the trainers, the medical staff, and, of course, the organization. Uh, you know, he's not a guy looking for the limelight. You know, when he was in uh, New York about a month ago, they're back in New York now, you know, the reporters say, yeah, do you like New York? how do you like New York? Do you have a good time? He goes, I don't know. I never went out of the hotel room except to catch a team bus to the game, take the team bus back out. Uh, that's the way he is. So very comfortable in, in that type of lifestyle. But I'm with you. I, I think they, uh, you know, you, you hate to say it, but I think this injury actually helps the Angels' chances of keeping him. And, uh, you know, I think he does appreciate the fact they let him do what he wanted to as far as, you know, when he was going to pitch, how often he was going to play. And, you know, they went for the deadline. Didn't work out, but at least he tried. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to, well, I mean, it's, are, are the Dodgers going to be willing to take the risk? How much will he pitch again? I, I, would you be shocked if the next plan for him long-term is more as a high leverage reliever and not as a starter? Perhaps just because, you know, as a reliever, then you don't know where you're pitching. It's tough to get ready. Much easier for a starter. So I think you know, if you're a, a team approaching free agency, you're looking at him just as a, a hitter, a premier hitter, uh, you know, and a guy who can play the outfield too, fabulous outfielder, great base runner. And if he can pitch, it's an added bonus. Maybe throw incentives in that contract sack. Like, okay, how much money for each appearance, innings, that sort of thing. But I think you got to look at him as just a uh, strip as a hitter. And to what you referenced before, Chris, I'm mean, a, a hitter that makes an organization a lot of money. I think the Angels make $20, $25 million a year off him just with licensing and merchandising, not even talking about ticket sales, but just with the uh, advertisements, that sort of thing. Yeah, he's so unique from a standpoint, our true first like international star who brings in so much international money. If anybody really knows his worth, it's obviously the Angels. And I just wonder, because, you know, up here, people always try and act like the San Francisco Giants are going to, well, maybe he'll go there or the Seattle Mariners and what they did with Ichiro. Can you even fathom him being outside of Southern California, either Anaheim or with the LA Dodgers? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think go to San Diego now after that you know mess there. I, I do believe the Giants could offer the most money because they'd probably need him the most just to get the fans back in the ballpark. You know, they uh, he's actually a you know big draw, uh, but you know the Angels draw well, and the you know, Dodgers draw great. Uh, I don't see Seattle. I mean. You know, people say, well, he's going to leave because he wants to win. Well, the Angels have won a lot more than the Mariners have in the last 20 years. They made the playoffs once. So why go to Seattle? I also think the fact that Ichiro is already there, he wants to do his own, you know, niche. So whether it's, you know, staying in uh, Anaheim or going to the Dodgers, where their, their last, you know, big Japanese star was Hideo Nomo. I remember we sat down with you at the winter meetings in San Diego, and we were all just continued to be shocked by the amount of money that the Padres were guaranteeing players over $800 million. And you're like, how many times can they keep doing this? And then since then, you know, you've heard the reports that Peter Seidler, the owner is guaranteeing these contracts based off his personal wealth and his companies. Are there people in baseball who are concerned about the finances with the Padres, especially since now we're not going to see that World Series parade. We're now not going to see him in the World Series like everybody thought. Are there concerns in baseball? Oh, very much so. I mean, except for the Mets, they're losing the most money in baseball. 
the Mets, of course, are owned by Steve Cohen, is worth seventeen billion. But you know, the Padres ownership doesn't have that kind of money. And uh, you know, what happens in future? You know, these guys are tied up for a long time. Uh, so what happens? You know, five, six years, you know, down the line, when they're breaking down everything else. So it could be a complete catastrophe. I mean, this could set this franchise back, you know, a couple of decades. Uh, this is the worst nightmare for the Players Association to see a team spend this kind of money and flop. I, I think they'll go down. Uh, I think there's zero chance to make the playoffs. I think they'll go down as the most underachieving team in baseball history. Wow. I mean, and it's it, it, and it is hard to debate that. I mean, everybody was just loving how good the Padres could be, but obviously it's been a an absolute disaster. Speaking of disasters, the A's are in Chicago, and I'm hearing, I can't remember where I heard this or read this, that Rick Hahn and Kenny Williams were actually on the field for batting practice, and then they later got fired after that. Jerry Reinsdorf has been loyal to a fault to employees, whether it's been the White Sox or the Chicago Bulls. He has said in the past, Kenny Williams is like a son to him. Kenny has been an executive for him since 2000, a scout before that. I know things have been bad in Chicago. Are you shocked how things went down on the South side? You know, I'm not. It was coming. Uh, Jerry Reinsdorf has started doing his own interviews the last couple of weeks saying, okay, what is going on here? He is sped up. I think he's seen less games this year than he ever has. Uh, tough to watch. Uh, and these guys promised him, hey, we rebuild. Let's tear this thing down. We're going to build a championship you know, caliber club. Well, the window stayed open for about a year and a half. It was a complete disaster. And I think, you know, uh, as close as he was with Ken Williams, it's like you can't fire one if not, you know, without firing the other one. So painful for him. Uh, he hates firing people, but it's something he had to do. I mean, you can't live off 2005 forever. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of people are talking about executives and what executives may, may, may be leaving us, maybe losing their jobs. And we thought about Chicago. Now we know for sure. You know, the question is, you want to get rid of Brian Cashman or you want to get rid of Hein Bloom or you want to get rid of some of these guys? You better have somebody that can come in and do a better job. You know, great executives don't grow on trees. Yeah, you know, I think in a high and bloom case, you know, they're not spending money trying to get the, uh, the low level players, but you know, it comes from ownership. You know, if they told him, hey, go spend $200 million on somebody, you know, they would do it. Uh, you know, Brian Cashman, first losing season, looks like in 25 years. So you get a mulligan. Uh, he just signed a look at a four year deal. So he's safe. Uh, I'm not sure about what's going to happen with the Los Angeles Angels. Uh, you know, Perry Manasia has only got a contract through next year. Phil Nevin, the manager, just through this year. So I wouldn't surprise anybody if they make changes there as well. You know, you've had your finger on the pulse of the A situation, and I know stuff that you've put out our fans are not happy about, but the truth is the truth. So I just, you know, lately, have you heard anything about the A's, any rumblings? We know that the relocation, a permission to relocate has been filed. There's going to be a vote by the owners. Are you hearing anything about the A's? You know, just um, they, they hired a construction firm a few weeks ago, uh, the firm out of Phoenix and in Minneapolis, McCarthy Group and Morrison Group. Uh, the people, MLB, have the uh, relocation papers. So, you know, I know people in Oakland are holding out hope, but, you know, their best plan is say, you know what, let's get a plan for the next team that comes in. Expansion's about five years away. Let's gear up for that and make sure that you know, Nashville gets a team Open gets a team too. There's no reason if a plan's in place, they won't come right back to open. All right, let's end on this. The AL West, super competitive. All year long, everybody just wanted to talk about how great the AL East is. And once we come back to it, the AL West is super exciting. The players, everything that's going on. Seattle back from the dead. Seattle, two different eight game winning streaks in August. We got Bruce Bosche and, and, and Chris Young resurrecting the Rangers. Here's Dusty Baker again. Verlander's back. It's like got the band back together. If you had to pick right now, it's super close at the end. Who do you think wins the AL West? And do the other two get into the into the wild cards? I think Houston Astros win the division. I know they've been playing poorly lately. Uh, you know, but they, they've been there, done that. Six straight ALCSs. 
I'm going to go with them. I'm going to the experience. None of the guy guys healthy. You saw Texas Rangers. They have lost six in a row. But like you said, they got Bruce Bochy. He's even keel. Uh, they had a game their night they lost. He's one who uh, he blamed himself instead of his own uh, relievers. Uh, I think Seattle is going to regret trading away their closer, Paul Seaweld. I know uh, they've won six in the last 20 games. Those four losses were because they didn't have a closer. I think it's going to come back and haunt them. Well, you know how much I've always appreciated what you've done for us and all the different shows that I've done. Uh, it's uh, why I still get uh, Sports Weekly, which is put on by the USA Today. It has all your articles in it every single week. And uh, just I'll always support. And I, I can't thank you enough for giving us the time that you've given throughout the years. You're one of the best. And we uh, always love having you on the program. You be well. and Let's talk soon. Look forward to it. My pleasure as always, Chris. Take care, buddy.